Okay, so we're back and now we're going to talk about all the transformations that we've done so far. We're going to graph a few more difficult trans transactions or transformations and then we're going to do another last video combining everything and doing a whole bunch of, of transformations and mapping rules to wrap it all together. So the first thing we're looking at here are the combinations of transformations. So this is a note, again, this note is available for you. Go to my website on PBWiki and I'll put the link again with this so you can find it. So combining the functions we've investigated, this is the rule that is generally used in, in your grade 11 math textbook if you're studying Nelson. Um, Nelson, I also have a link for a textbook if you don't have one, so you can check it out. Y equals A, F, bracket, K, X minus D, close bracket, plus C. So what we're looking at here is all the transformations you can possibly do to a function. What you need to remember is that anything that is outside the bracket, so here's my big bracket, so anything outside, that's A and C. These are changes to Y, Y changes. And everything inside the bracket is a change to X. So this is all changes to your X value. Y, X. Okay, if you get that, and remember that Y's are normal and X's are weird, you will just sail through this, no problem. What information does A tell us? Well, A, we did that way back at the beginning. A was a stretch or a compression. So it tells us stretches. And compressions. Stretches and compressions. So stretches where this happens when A is greater than 1. And compressions when it's between 0 and 1. It can also tell you reflections if it's negative. right? That was something else we learned down here with the reflections. What does the K tell us? Now the K is inside the bracket, so it has to talk about, well just maybe we should write here vertical, that's very important that it's vertical. Remember we said it's Y, change to Y, anything Y is vertical. K is inside the brackets, so that's going to be a change to X. So K is horizontal stretches and compressions and compressions. The D value, that's your horizontal shift. Horizontal, just going to write it short form. Horizontal shift or translation, depend on what your teacher uses. Horizontal shift left and right. And the C, that's going back to a Y change. So that's vertical shift up or down. Okay, now the next part of your note here tells you that the order of translations is important. Perform them in the following order. That's if you're asked to graph from scratch one piece at a time. I don't know many teachers that would make you do that. Generally, you make up a mapping rule and you follow it. So what it is saying here, though, is that expansions and compressions, those are like your stretches and compressions, stretches or expansions, same thing. So anything that involves multiplication of your X or Y value has to go before you do a reflection, which is a negative A value. I'm going to write that on here because it didn't really come up here. So negative A. doesn't matter if A is, po is um, greater one than 1 or between 0 and 1. And translations means up, down, left, and right. Notice that this means you're performing multiplications before additions and subtractions. Okay, we know that. 
Okay, now this is a really key point and one that you're bound to make a mistake on. It's a very, very common mistake. And that is that if you want to find the translation left and right, before you do that, you have to factor out the coefficient of x. This is very, very important or else you'll have the wrong shift. Factor the coefficient of the x term. So you know how to factor it. You know how to factor? I hope so. So here we have 3x plus 6 squared. So this is all in brackets. So these are all changes to x. I factor out the 3 and I have x plus 2 squared. So you can see if I hadn't factored that out, you'd probably say, oh, it's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3. Remember, x's are weird. You're going to divide by 3. But then you might have said that it shifts to the left 6 when it's really only shifting to the left 2. Okay, so you have to factor this out first, and then you can tell how much it's been shifted left and right. So I'm going to write, it's a horizontal, this is all horizontal changes, horizontal transformations, because it's all inside the bracket. Anything in bracket is x's, x's are weird. Horizontal, now you'd probably say stretch because it's bigger than, than 1, but it's going to be 1 over. So once you put 1 over it, it's a horizontal compression by a factor of one third. And the second is going to be a horizontal shift. It says plus two, so it's going to go left two. Horizontal shift left two units. Okay, so same with this function over here now. Let's see what the transformation was. Being very careful, even if it's a negative, it must be factored out. Or you would say it goes left five when it's going right five. Do you understand? Make sure you factor out whatever is in front of x, even if it's a negative sign. So this means it's going to be reflected Okay, now, my students have trouble figuring out which axis. So if we're changing the x's, make a quick little sketch. X's from one side to the other, we're reflecting about the y-axis. See how that works? So if x was negative, move over here is positive. Positive here, move it negative. So it's reflected about the y-axis. And we have a horizontal shift, horizontal shift, it says minus 5, right 5, right, you got that, right 5 units. Okay, so let's write out the mapping rules, the mapping rules for each one of these. So back here first, we have x and y are going to go to, so what do I do to my x's? What do I have to do to my x? Well, we said it was a factor, a compression of a third. So it says 3 here. So we're going to divide the x's by 3. Or you can write 1 third x. It's the same thing as x over 3. x over 3, whoops, I was a little quick to jump there. It's my eraser. Got to do something else to the x, right? x over 3 minus 2. So we divide it by 3, we subtract 2, we do absolutely nothing to the y coordinates. Why? Because there's nothing in front of the bracket. Okay, so this is like a transformation of x squared, only it's all inside the brackets. So it's only x, nothing to y. Same with this one here, nothing happened to the y. If there was a change to y, it would be here and out here. Okay, so this is all inside the bracket or all underneath the radical sign. So this is only changes to x. So I'm going to multiply the x's by a negative number, negative 1. So it's going to be negative x. And it says went to the left 5, but I know x's are weird. So I'm going to do minus x 
does that twice, plus 5, and no change to the y. No change to the y. So now they want you to graph it, so you need to know what was the parent function. So the parent function for this is y equals x squared, right? We started with y equals x squared. See how all this could be replaced by an x? And this parent function would be y equals the root of x. So I want to know the key points on x squared so that I can apply the transformation. So you should know the key points by now. I think I'm going to write them on a bigger piece of paper here so that we have more space. So for x squared, key points would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and also the negative values. So minus 2, 4, minus 1, 1. Probably should have written that in a better order, but it's okay. So my x and y's are going to go to, what do we do here? x over 3 minus 2. x over 3 minus 2, leave the y alone. So very easy for the first one here. 0 divided by 3 is 0, minus 2 is minus 2. The y, I leave it alone. Nothing happened to the y. The second one, I have 1 over 3, that's 1 third minus 2, so 1 third minus 2 is the same as 6 thirds, that's going to be minus 5 thirds. You need to know your fractions. Minus 5 thirds, nothing happens to the y. The next one, 2, 4. Well, I know I don't have to do anything to the, to the y. But the 2 minus 2 divided by 3, so I have minus 2 over 3 minus 6 thirds, because 6 thirds, 2 is equal to 6 over 3, right? So minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8 thirds. And minus 2, 4, so minus 2. Whoops, you know what, I made a mistake here. That should have been this one here. I was looking down. Minus 8 thirds and 4. Let's just fix this one here. Sometimes you make mistakes. So this should have been 2 thirds. Now we have 2 thirds minus 6 thirds is minus 4 thirds. Okay, just make sure you correct that on your own. Minus 4 thirds. And the y stay the same. And the last one here was minus 1, so I want minus 1 third, and then minus 6 thirds is minus 7 thirds. So I have minus 7 thirds and 1. And now you're going to take these coordinates and you're going to plot them on the graph. Okay. Uh, do we want to do that? Sure we do. So we have minus 2 and 0, won't take long, minus 2 and 0, minus 5 thirds, that's minus 1 and 2 thirds and 1. And we have, we have minus 5 thirds, minus 4 thirds and 4, minus 4 thirds and 4. And we have minus 8 thirds and 4. Minus 8 thirds is minus 2 and a third and 4. That's up here. And we have minus 7 thirds and 1. So that's like this. So there's my, there's my parabola. Okay. Now the same thing with this one. You want key points on the graph of the root of x. Let's just flip this over here. So key points on the root of x. Now you should know these by now. We know that key points are 0, 0, 1, square root of 1 is 1, 4, square root of 4 is 2, and maybe we'll do 9 and 3 depending on whether or not it fits with our transformation. So now we're going to go negative x plus 5 and leave the y alone. That's right from here, okay? So minus x plus 5. That means 0, 0 is going to go to 5 and 0. 
minus 1 plus 5 is 4, and 1 stays alone. Minus 4 plus 5 is 1 and 2. And minus 9 plus 5 is minus 4 and 3. So my original function, let's sketch that one on here quickly so you remember what it looked like. This is the square root function. We're going to plot these points here. So we have 5 and 0. I'm going to get some color for this one. So we have 5 and 0. We have 4 and 1. We have 1 and 2. And we have minus 4 and 3. Okay, so if you look at this, you want to find where your 0 went to. So my 0 i put this up here for a second. The 0, 0 went to 5 and 0. And then you can see that it goes to 4 and 1. So it's, it's going this way, right? And that's what happened here. Here's my graph. Look. Ooh, like that. Now, it's important that you see that this is going this way. Why? Because we reflected it about the y-axis. Reflection about the y-axis. And then shifted right five units. So here's my shift right five units. Okay, so we shifted it right five, we reflected it, shifted it right five. No change to the y's. Okay, so I hope that helped you and the next lesson we'll do some more difficult transformations so it should pull everything together for you.